In the previous RetroArch installation and setup video, we went over the initial settings for NetPlay, but we did not go over actual NetPlay, so let's cover that. One of the standout features of RetroArch is without a doubt the NetPlay, which features the amazing rollback technology based on the infamous GGPO netcode. Coming into version 1.5.0, NetPlay has changed a great deal. Now players can broadcast themselves from across multiple platforms and play their game of choice while waiting for someone to join. With that being said, there are a few things that must be set up to ensure that you have a successful connection. First and foremost, if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you do so now as we will not be reviewing any of what we went over previously. Starting NetPlay is pretty simple. First, we will head to the NetPlay room icon located at the end of the menu. The icon is represented by a headset. Stopping on this icon will bring up three options below it. The first option is to broadcast NetPlay. Once you select this option, this means you become a host, so any game you decide to play, someone will be connecting to you. Once you start this option, a warning may come up about allowing RetroArch to pass through the Windows firewall. Be sure to say OK, otherwise no one will be able to connect to you. If you are in full screen mode, press the F key on your keyboard to go into Windows mode so that you can allow access for the connection to go through. Once this is done, choose your core and select a game. Once the game is loaded, you will see confirmation on the left hand corner of your screen to let you know you are waiting for a connection. If you selected the Use Relay Server option located in Network Settings, you will most likely see Connecting to NIC. This is how you and another player may be able to bypass blocked ports. The next option is used for connecting directly to a host by way of an IP address. This is optional and is no longer required because of the next option. Last but not least, we have the Refresh Room List option. Here you'll be able to see players who are broadcasting their game of choice. As you can see, each player has a ton of details like what region they live in, the version of RetroArch they are using, the game they are hosting, and the core they are using. There are two different choices you can have to help ensure a successful connection. The first option is just running the game in the core in question. As long as RetroArch has the game saved in the history section located here, then you can attempt to connect to the hosted game. The other option is to scan your ROMs in so they create a list of your available games. You have the option of scanning an entire folder or just the game you want to play. You may find that none of your ROMs scan in. This is because the RetroArch scanner looks for good ROM dumps. The no intro ROM sets seem to be the most compatible ROMs available out of the bunch I have used. If you are unable to connect with someone, it could be that you and the person you are trying to connect to have different ROMs. There are also some cross-platforming issues that may be in play as well. It's important to note that not all the cores support NetPlay. I've tried to compile a list of confirmed cores in the description box, so please make sure and look it over. I suggest using this core to find someone to try this out with if you don't already have a willing participant. RetroArch is now completely integrated with Discord and shows your game and the core you are using and even lets you request to join up with someone as well. I will leave a link to the official RetroArch Discord in the description box as well. For now, this is the core your resident entertainment techie signing out.